welcome to your all active reserve and veterans TV series. This information education show has three goals. Tell who military veterans are, share about all organizations, auxiliaries, their programs and officers at all levels, and tell about memorials in all the cities we serve in this network. The VA system, state and county officers, hospitals and state homes are also featured. Please do check out our websites, share your program ideas and concerns via the contact information on the show. We open each month's show with a patriotic theme. Once again to another program of Vets Visits on TV. This is my co-host, Neil Doyle with Homestead County Veteran Services. And I'm uh, Jerry Barnhart, the founder producer of the program, and this is number 173 for the month of August. Boy, this summer is really winding down, isn't it, Neil? Feels like it just got here. It just got here, <laughs> that's right. And it's been an interesting one worldwide, and uh, we're hoping the, the troops are really on their way home now, too. They understand that they have been talking about the uh, uh, countdown. Well, now, let's look at some dates in history. The 2nd of August in 1990, Iraq invaded Kuwait, which began the Persian Gulf War, and now that's in its 21st year. When will it ever end, says the song. The 4th, the Coast Guard was established. On the 6th, in August in 1945, the atom bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. And without surrender from the Japanese, a second bomb was dropped. Uh, let's see, I think just a couple of days later, uh, on Nagasaki, as yes, the 9th. And finally, on the 14th, the Japanese agreed to surrender, and it was a few weeks or so before they signed the uh, surrender papers on board a ship. Now, let's get to our first feature for today. Neil? In June, Jerry attended the VFW Awards event, uh, similar to that of all other state conventions. Individuals and posts of many sizes were recognized. Here is an example as the Minnesota Boy Scouts Chair, National Boy Scouts Committeeman, will introduce a Boy Scout of the Year. And what is your name? John Tuig. And Mr. Cruy, uh, what is your position with the VFW in Minnesota? Uh, the Scouting Chairman for the Department. And what? Scouting Chairman for the Department of Minnesota. Scouting Chairman. And also a member of the National Scouting Team. Really? Right. And what is the... What is the purpose of the national? Do it's, they have a special purpose for the well, scouting? Well, the, the purpose is uh, scouting is one of our major youth programs. Mm -hmm. And uh, we encourage all posts, auxiliaries to get involved in scouting because scouting uh, develops the values in the youth mm -hmm. that we need for future citizens right. and future members of the VFW. Mm -hmm. If they go into the service. If they go into the service, right. right. And the way it's going now, they'll be in the service. And, and so there is a, a, a representative from every department that goes to the national. Is there a special event at the national as well? Yes, yes. Uh, the state winners uh, go to the national and then they pick out uh, first, second, and third place. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Billy did not make that oh. list. Well, we want to introduce your department from Minnesota person. Okay. Should we do Scott that? Of the, Scott, Scott of the Year this year for the state of Minnesota is uh, Eagle Scout Billy, or William Billy Stout. Uh, and, and from what, uh, who is 
No, what uh, community does he represent or post? Uh, he, his uh, uh, home and uh, his uh, scout troop is Woodbury, Minnesota. Okay. And he's sponsored by Cottage Grove Post 8752. Excellent. Very good. Okay, let's hear from uh, William. Okay, thank you. Sir. Okay, and good morning to you, sir. Good morning. And uh, what what year? How many years are you doing scouting? Huh? How many years have you been doing scouting? I've been scouting for um, since I was a kindergartner. So, so oh. a long time. I've been in the Boy Scouts since as, I was as twelve. A, as a pre cub. Yes, yes. Okay. Little tiny squirt. Uh, yeah. So you've been coming a long ways. Oh yes. Yeah. I was in scouting. I got up to be uh, a first class and a patrol leader. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I've no been a patrol badges, leader multiple times. You huh? have quite an array, sir. How yes, many sir. have you gathered? I have gathered, I believe, forty. No, thirty-four. My, and that's been a very important learning experience, I presume, hasn't it? Oh, yes, it? yes. Many, many experiences, many memories, uh -huh. memories I won't forget for a long time. And and what what award did you get for being department um, representative? Come again. What award? Hmm? Yeah, I got a, got a plaque and a $500 scholarship. Very good. Well, it's been a pleasure to meet you, unless there's something special you would like to add. Uh, well, I'd like to thank the VFW for the for accepting my application and uh, for uh, letting me get this award. I'm right. really happy to get it. And and you are what year in high school? I'm I just graduated on the 11th of June uh, from so high school. From and high school. your plans are to? I'm going to River Falls, UW River Falls, in the fall, and I'll be playing football there. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much, both of you, for sharing with Thank us you. on Vets Visits on TV. Thank you. Next, the Veterans of Foreign Wars Department for Minnesota Adjutant steps in for the Minnesota Commander, Don Dahlman, to share some of the ongoing programs of the VFW in Minnesota and the National. One very special long-term project was begun last year at one of the state's veteran cemeteries. We think you'll be interested in this very special project, and we go out to the lobby uh, then to visit with the uh, con person who conceived of the project and is the artist, Charles Kafsner. If you are interested in this ongoing uh, VFW Department of Minnesota project, uh, we will be offering the World Wide Website uh, as you look on. So here we go for our next feature. What is your name? Good morning, Frank Pressfield. And you are from? Minnesota. I'm actually from St. Cloud, Minnesota. It's my home. Mm -hmm. And what is your um, position with the Minnesota I'm VFW? S state Judge Advocate. Okay. Which is like a... You're advocating for, uh, as a lawyer type? Primarily to interpret the national bylaws mm -hmm. and any bylaws and resolutions that might come before the department. Mm -hmm. And this morning you're representing the, the department commander. That's right. Okay. Now, uh, where is the department commander from and his name? Don Dahlman. He's from Princeton, Minnesota. Yes. Not too far away from St. Cloud? Not too far. Right. I lived up in that area for a while. Uh, now, um, what are some of the important projects that the commander has had this year? His, uh, he has a personal project this year at the uh, Minnesota Veterans Cemetery in uh, Camp Ripley, mm -hmm. Minnesota. And his project up there is a mural up in the rotunda up there, a series of five paintings, uh, 80 square feet mm -hmm. per painting, representing each uh, branch, each service branch, what have you. It's a $400,000 project. Mm -hmm. It'll take uh, four to six years to complete. Where is this, um, uh, where is this uh, mural located? It's in, it's in the rotunda. Mm -hmm. They're at the Camp Ripley Minnesota Veterans Cemetery. And the rotunda, and we have taped there in the past. So right, right next to Camp Ripley, which is a training area right. for our troops. Right mm -hmm. off Highway 371. Mm -hmm. And so, in the next six years, that's to be. 
hopefully completed. be completed uh-huh. by and that you've time. been gathering funds i We've take been, it that's right we mm-hmm. gather funds all the time mm-hmm. it's, it's it's an expensive project i'm sure and if people wish to get involved in it they could just write the they department can write headquarters, the department in, headquarters in st paul mm-hmm. that's correct that's great that's great uh what are some other projects that you might like to mention at this time well uh, all of the projects that we have, uh, we have core projects. Um, you just, uh, we had uh, scouting, we have youth activities, we have safety, uh, aid to others, uh, community service projects. It's a myriad, myriad of, of projects that are going all the time. Okay, good. And we had a number of awards that were given this morning. That's correct. And many that's, awards, yeah. uh, many, many awards. What is your specialty, sir? Well, I am an oil painter, so I work with portraits, the figure, still life, florals, sort of a renaissance man, of, so, so to speak. And, and, and your home is? Little Falls, Minnesota. Little Falls, and you happen to settle there because? Well, I'm from there originally, but I've been on the road a lot since about 1973. Mm-hmm. I uh, was educated in Florence, Italy, so I worked in a private studio in Florence, Italy from 74 to 81. Did you have a master that you studied with? Yes, um, uh, Madame Nerina Simi, and then also I worked with Benjamin Franklin Long IV uh, in fresco paintings. So okay. I worked both fresco and oil. So you have had a wide area of experience in working with MIDI mediums, would you um, say? I, well, oil, fresco, drawing, yes. There, there are quite a few other mediums I've not tackled. I mean, I've not worked with sculpture. I've not done acrylic and things okay. like that. Or, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, we talked uh, in an interview with another person uh, regarding a special project that you are doing at Little Fall, uh, Camp Ripley. Isn't well, it? actually, it's, it's the State Veterans Cemetery north of Little Falls. The, mm-hmm. the cemetery is not affiliated with Camp Ripley at all. Mm-hmm. It's under the auspices of the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs. Okay. So uh, you were commissioned to do a special project there? Yes, by a small cemetery association in Little Falls. They approached me back in uh, 2008 with the possibility of doing something like this. And um, we chatted about it, and then we formed a committee in uh, May of 2009. And then in September of 2009, we signed a contract for me to do the first uh compositional sketches for the mm-hmm. project mm-hmm. and uh, once those were approved in early last year probably around March I began working on the army composition What's well what we have right here this is all part of the army composition and uh, we go back to 1775 and we're starting with the Revolutionary War some very interesting vignettes so uh, and that's what we're gonna see right now are the major vignettes and some of the studies that were done for the project so here we have the five Remember Cannon Team, Molly Pitcher, then all of a sudden we moved to War of 1812, Mexican-American War, and there'll be a lot of little studies on, on the ground to kind of add more mm-hmm. to the storyline, like the White House will be in so there. So you begin with a sketch in pencil. Right. Uh, and then move it to full size. Is well, what these, these are done from models that come to my studio. Oh, so these I are see. all people that have been in my studio. So from oh. these small sketches, I work uh, on a 32 by 40 inch um, compositional drawing called a cartoon and then from that they are photographed and then blown up to the full eight by ten foot image that's on the canvas itself. I was itself. never called in to be a model. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have everything. <laughs> no, I didn't know you back then. <laughs> that's true. Here you can see what the cartoon drawing looks like. So this, it's this piece that is photographed, the chip is pulled out of the camera, put in the projector and then we project the image onto the canvas and in one of the upcoming slides you will see that and of course here we have World War One, World War Two nurse um, we have Korean That's my war, war right okay, there. Okay, there we go. A mm-hmm. um, friend of mine that modeled for this, the Korean War, World War One, and the homeless vets, the same guy as an old classmate of mine. Okay. They have Vietnam era. And um, again, this is all the background information mm-hmm. before I get on to the final drawing okay. itself and then the painting. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll just hold for a second sure. here. It's projected onto the big That's canvas. That's you right there. Here I am working on, I'm out at the cemetery. Uh, in the maintenance buildings where I started. The painting's now in my studio. So now from that other picture, you can see I'm starting to put the images on the canvas itself. So this is the very first touching of the canvas. And upcoming, we'll see, this was taken only about two months ago. And there is a slide coming up uh, of it from two days ago. So here it is right here. So this is what the painting's now looking like as of two days okay. ago. So that would be June 15th. 
So there's a lot to and go. And you yet. project uh, how how long is it till uh, it's supposed to be done now? The first one I'd like to have finished by the end of September, early October. We decided yesterday at one of our meetings that we'll have an installation ceremony on uh, uh, November 11th of this year. On installation of the first piece. As each painting oh, is done, okay. we will install it at the cemetery okay. at the Committal Hall, um, because obviously this is was. Funding is being done through fundraising, and so having the first painting there would be very useful and important for us. Of course. Okay. Excellent. And so this is going to be a long-term project? I yes. Um, I'm anticipating five years altogether, so I'm, I'm a full year into it, about, mm -hmm. about a year and a half. And mm -hmm. so uh, uh, I plan on picking up the, the, the research process a little faster. I mean, you know, the, the Army one is been a real sort of learning process. I mean, how do you go about putting together something of this magnitude, this large, and when, when you've got to rely on 22 different people or 22 different models for the mm -hmm. characters, there's a lot of logistics. Right. So the other compositions will not have as many figures, therefore that will make it somewhat easier. Uh-huh. Well, sir, I thank you so much for oh, sharing no with us this morning, and we'll look for the progress, and if this physics is still around in six years, Hopefully there'll be a dedication and uh, oh, yes. get to the public. Yes, absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you so much for sharing with us. Last November, after a Veterans Day program, Jerry was invited to share the dedication of a project of the Rochester Exchange Club. First, Dick Hexian and Annette Frank, the state president, are interviewed, then MC, the Reverend Roger Polanski, retired, shares the purpose of the Freedom Shrine. And plaques like copies of the Declaration of Independence, Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, and Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech are all shown. Dick Hexham, a member of Rochester Exchange Club. And what is happening here this afternoon, sir? Pardon me? What is happening here this afternoon? Well, we're so delighted as a club and so proud to be able to dedicate this Freedom Shrine to the City of Rochester and the Park Department. Uh -huh. It's been a concerted effort by every member of Rochester Exchange Club, not just the committee, but every member had a part of it and has a piece of this proud and uh, wonderful memorial. And it's located right across from the uh, Veterans Soldiers Memorial. Soldiers Field Veterans Memorial. So yes. the people there fought for what we are presenting here mm -hmm. as an addition to the Veterans Memorial. And what a wonderful tribute and what a wonderful opportunity we had to work with the Veterans Memorial team to put this together and help us place where it is. And the Park Department was just wonderful in allowing us to do this. Well, as a member of the of the trustees for the Soldier Field Memorial, I'm pleased to be able to, to tape this and show relationship between the Soldier Field Memorial and, and this fine addition that you have added here. Oh, we've today. had such a wonderful relationship. Wayne Stillman, Harry Kerr, Bob DeWitts, mm -hmm. Merle Peterson. Those four people were very, very instrumental in working with us to achieve this goal. Super. Now, can we introduce this young lady that's with us that was at now, the... Now, this is the Minnesota Exchange Club president. Okay. And welcome. And your name is... My name is Annette Frank. And okay. I'm so proud to be here today and just be a part of this historic event. We have 19 clubs in the state of Minnesota, and I'm here just to represent every one of them and to tell Rochester how proud we are mm -hmm. that they're the third, mm -hmm. the third outdoor freedom shrine in all of the United States. Where are the other two located? Uh, the other two, I, I don't know right oh, okay. offhand, but I know that they are the third one. And so that, that's a pretty historic event here in, in Rochester. Well, this is wonderful that you could be here for this dedication today. And there's a, a large crowd that's assembled. Absolutely. Uh, what are some of the other ideals of the, of the Exchange Club, just as a... 
Absolutely. Side. Americanism, obviously, is, is one of our big focus areas in exchange, and that's what the Freedom Shrine represents. But we also focus on our youth, our community service, and our national project is child abuse prevention. And so all of the exchange clubs across the United States are, are providing projects and programs in their communities to try to make a difference in those four areas. Super. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. Thank Ned. you for having us. And dedication. I'm Roger Polanski, past president of the Rochester Exchange Club, and I would like to first of all recognize some of our special guests who played an important part in making this day possible. I am sure that I will not be able to remember or introduce all who significantly contributed, but we'll give it an attempt as anyway. First, and now I invite you to remove your caps and join me in honoring America as the VFW Honor Guard presents the colors, followed with the invocation by Legion Chaplain Jerry Barnhart. always tremendously moving when this happens. Jerry? Let us be in prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, you have granted us many privileges in life. The forefathers who planned for this freedom of this country. We are grateful for their insights and their concerns for the future. And for all who would follow them in leading this country and its responsibilities. We are thankful for the opportunity today to dedicate a reminder of those responsibilities and of those freedoms. We do thank you, O oh God, for each person who's able to be here, to be a part of this celebration of our freedom and our liberty as a part of the Soldier's Field Memorial. Grant us your insight your spirit as we continue to fellowship together in feeling your presence with us in your guiding hand we ask this in your holy name through christ our lord amen amen thank you chaplain barnard This is a very proud day for our Rochester Exchange Club. To be able to dedicate this Freedom Shrine, after a number of years of preparation, planning, and designing, we are proud to present this to the community in order that it might accomplish many, many things. In 1947 through 49, the Freedom Train rode through the United States at the instruction of Harry Truman, in order that after a period of depression and war, people might be reminded again of that which is important to those people who sacrificed service and life in order that we might enjoy freedom. It was soon after the Freedom Train that the Rochester, or the uh, National Exchange Club, instituted the Freedom Shrine. And through the years, we have been presenting freedom shrines in libraries, in schools, in many institutions, the government center, in order that these documents, which put forth the principles 
of freedom and liberty might be preserved and presented to communities so that we never lose sight of that which is important to being the United States of America. And so with this background, we are proud to have this first of three outdoor freedom shrines in the United States being here as a partner with the Soldiers Field Memorial and to partner with that in order that we might present to the community the principles which are the background for those people who served our country both with service and life that you have remembered in that beautiful facility of the memorial. We thank you and we are proud to partner with you in this Freedom Shrine dedication. Perhaps you are familiar with the Gold Star family emblem. And it signifies, of course, that a family has a uh, son or daughter that are serving uh, overseas in a deployment. And uh, just to recognize that fact. And now there's a family weekend that is being sponsored at Forest Lake uh, Disabled Veterans Rest Camp. If you'd like to uh, check into this rest camp uh, north of the uh, Twin Cities, you're welcome to check out this phone number that we have for you. And then uh, uh, talk to Ron Weiss, W-E-I-S-S, -S, at the Gold Star Family Weekend. And remember, this is sponsored by the American Legion and VFW of Forest Lake, along with the Disabled Veterans Rest Camp. We hope you'll check it out. It's going to be a wonderful experience to get together and share. Well, that does it for another program of Vets Visits. It was a good show, Jerry. I think so, too. Hope people enjoy the activities that we are presenting, uh, information and education. And uh, if you live in any one of our 21 states, you're most welcome to check us out again for another program of Vets Visits on TV. Thank you for joining us for this month's show. Seen in over 350 communities for over 3,500 half-hour periods. Our websites have additional information about the show and are updated bi-monthly. To contact us, you are welcome to use one of these electronic methods. For all ground mail with questions, suggestions for future programs, you may use this address. Our IRS nonprofit status is 501c3, Information Education. The Minnesota Commissioner of VA and these state level organizations believe in and endorse Vets Visits. Join us next time, won't you, for Vets Visits on TV.